Are you believing a revival, a Jesus movement can happen in this generation, in this country, and around the world? It's time for another Jesus revolution. This is the definitive podcast for helping you plan, create, and execute dynamic worship experiences at your church. Useful, practical content in the areas of production, worship, communications, first impressions, and more. This is Making Sunday Happen. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. For the last couple months, Jason Noble from our kids podcast and myself, we've been telling you about the brand new movie, Jesus Revolution. It's coming to theaters February 24th. It's coming fast, and today on the show, I welcome the director of that film, John Irwin, will be joining me. John's a great guy. He's a filmmaker. He's the CEO of Kingdom Story Company, uh, which has given us uh, movies like I Can Only Imagine, I Still Believe, American Underdog, and more. We'll be diving into talking about the movie and how you can use it at your church. How can you support the film? How you can build worship experiences around it? You can craft an experience at the theater. How to use resources with your congregation? All of that. Uh, They've provided all types of resources that you can use on Sunday to promote and incorporate the movie into your teaching, into your flow. Uh, This film follows the Jesus movement and the beginning of Calvary Chapel. It has an incredible cast, including Kelsey Grammer as Pastor Chuck Smith, also Jonathan Rumi, who you might know from The Chosen, uh, Kimberly Williams Paisley, and more. I'll talk to John about bridging the gap between Hollywood and the faith community. Also, again, how you can use the film on Sunday and more. Check out this short trailer of the movie, and then we'll jump right in with my interview with John Irwin. Check this out. Hey, Square. I am not a square. I think we should invite Greg this weekend. What's this weekend? These people are hippies, rebels against old-fashioned authority. I think these kids need help. They need is a bath. You're passing judgment on people you know nothing about. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. When God walks in here, brings me a hippie. I'll ask him what it's all about, because I do not understand. This house has a very good vibe. There's an entire generation searching. Slow down, man, slow down. Just in all the wrong places. If you want to reach my people, you need to speak to them in a language they understand. If I bring them in, I'm going to lose my job. We can only walk through doors open to us. In your church, that's a door that's shut. You've probably noticed we have some guests here today. I'd like you to meet my new friends. Welcome. They don't belong here. Half of them aren't even wearing shoes. They're staining the new shag carpet. They need our help. If you feel like you're misunderstood and judged, you will find forgiveness and freedom right here. That was awesome. Now that door is open any time of day. And if there are some who don't like that, well then that door works both ways. All right, Pastor, let's begin. I was almost done with this, but then you did what nobody else would even dare. This thing that we found, I feel like I belong. You're gonna need a bigger church. Our country is a dark and divided place, but now there's hope and it's spreading. This is your home, and I want you to tell all your friends about it. Hey guys, today I welcome John Irwin. John is a filmmaker and CEO of Kingdom Story Company. John and his brother Andy have produced feature films like Woodlawn, I Can Only Imagine, I Still Believe, American Underdog, awesome film, uh, and others. Their latest project, Jesus Revolution, is in theaters everywhere February 24th. John, welcome, man. Thanks for hanging out. Hey, thanks for having me. I I appreciate it. It's fun to you know, what, what unifies us all is just, is, is, is using technology to tell stories, you know, yeah. and that's uh, stories that, that make a difference. And, and I tell people, you know, we, we serve the greatest storyteller of all time. The parables of Jesus are like a, a master's class in short filmmaking, screenwriting, you know, and, uh, 
and I, it's fun to it's fun to uh, try to use the very best tools to tell yeah. stories that 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 are meaningful to people, you know, and that can I, I really do believe that the right story, well told, can can change your life, you know, and and so it's fun to it's fun to that's what that's what joins us all, you know. Yeah, and you guys have been at it for a while, man. I, I appreciate you know. Uh, I know you guys have worked with the our, our buddies, the Kendricks, uh, Stephen and Alex, some, and then oh, I, I work a lot with NRB, and so I was I was there when you guys kind of launched the company, uh, Kingdom Story mm-hmm. Company, there at NRB, uh, and so uh, you guys have just been uh, really great. I know the the pandemic kind of uh, d- took a took a turn i bet on you guys um oh, for the so, whole industry for, for uh, yeah. wealth, and for the church for the entertainment industry anyone who who you know um gathered you know it was a it'll be it, it was a uniquely uh one-of-a-kind disruptive event and it's interesting to see the ways it shaped and reshaped entertainment and i think a lot of changes that would have happened over the course of a decade just happened much quicker very quickly, like Napster yeah. with music and <laughs> yeah. so uh yeah. what is sure that, that again the church was the same way yeah, true that. Yeah. It's the yeah. thing that destroyed the music industry. You know, <laughs> yeah, I reshaped exactly. it, you know, and exactly. reshaped it quickly. Well, man, you guys have done a great job with this film. I've seen a screening of it uh, in kind of an earlier form. It's fantastic. Uh, I think audiences are really going to enjoy it and also be informed uh, about the Jesus movement, uh, Jesus revolution uh, that happened. So kind of tell me, give me the origin story. How did this film come about for you guys? Well, this film is really really special um uh, uh to me um i'm obsessively curious by nature i just believe in curiosity as like one of the one of the underappreciated uh virtues to develop and um and normally like with a movie like american underdog or i can only imagine andy and i and kevin and the team we're, we're good at coming in with something that has been in development for a long time and getting it made and there's been some wonderful producers that like Cindy Bond, if I can only imagine that just had been with it for eight years and we were just, you know, had the good fortune of timing to come in and, and get it made um, and fall in love with the story. And, 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 and Bart, we love inspirational, true stories. Yeah. This is the first time that I've been with something like this from the very, very beginning. And, and that's what makes it very, very special to me when we were doing the film Woodlawn that was set in the 1970s. And it was the first true story we did. And so the story of a whole high school being, saved from uh, violence through a revival and uh, the first black superstar athlete uh, emerging out of Birmingham, Alabama, recruited by Bear Bryant. Um, uh, you know, as a filmmaker, you have to to sort of be cynical. I've been a Christian all my life. Not, not cynical. You have to just be, a, a you know, sort of a sort of um, as, as objective as you can. And I was just like, could this really have happened? Like, did this really happen? Is this really true? As we were doing all these interviews. A whole high school and i just discovered that it was happening not only in birmingham alabama but it was happening all over the nation in something that became known as the jesus movement and i on ebay uh i got this magazine this time magazine cover article an article you can't read online and it it was this psychedelic jesus on the cover and and the cover was the jesus revolution and i just remember reading it and almost weeping has been, I've been a Christian all my, you know, I mean, I was born and raised, in, you know, in, 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 uh, at the altar of, of, of my church, you know, in Birmingham, Alabama. And, uh, and, and yet our generation, like I've never experienced anything like this. And every story I heard, I was just, you know, we talk about a lot about the entertainment industry, the fear of missing out, you know, FOMO. Yeah. I had FOMO. I'm like, we've never experienced anything like this. How could we have something like this in our time? And, and in our, in our day, and, uh, I just became a student of the Jesus movement and started studying it and then traced it all the way back to its origin, <clears throat> did interviews all over America. There's so many church leaders today that came from the Jesus movement. Uh, mm-hmm. I, my parents were the, the culminating event of the Jesus movement was this thing called Expo 72. It's a quarter million mm-hmm. kids in Dallas, Texas, the most baptisms ever in a single year for the Southern Baptist for 1972. And that's when this thing happened. And my parents were there. It was their honeymoon. Dallas Jenkins, creator of the chosen, his parents were there moved so much. That's why he's named Dallas. And so a lot of the church today can be traced to a bunch of teenagers getting saved in this movement. And I I just, I traced it and studied it all the way back to its origin in Southern California and found this really great sort of, this is where it all began story. And, uh, and it was one of those 
movies that I thought there's no way this is going to, that, that a studio will let me make this. And so a lot of doing movies like American underdog was just getting the, the enough equity to, to have a studio, let us make the movie and for Lionsgate to let, to, to fund and, and distri- distribute wide in theaters across America, a movie, you know, with Jesus in the title, that is the origin story of the last great awakening in America is still mind blowing to me. So yeah. it's a movie that I think is, is eerily relevant. It's fun. It's funny. It's, it's heartfelt. There's a great love story. There's a lot of natural humor because it was hippies and squares in the context of this movement together. But there really is a purpose behind the film is, is we, I, I would love to see this happen again in my own yeah. life, in my family, in my city, yeah. in our nation. And that's sort of the cause behind the movie, but I'm very proud of the movie that we made and, and I love this story, and, and this is seven years for me in studying this story and trying to bring it to a screen. So, how, where did you connect with Greg, Greg Laurie? Uh, and did, was it a revelation or a moment that I, he was he was a part of this, or how, how did that timeline work for you? So, I connected with Greg Laurie when I was studying this. I wanted to meet people that lived this movement. Um, and we were also doing Woodlawn. And in Woodlawn, there's a scene where there's 42,000 people praying the Lord's Prayer. And they're all computer people. <laughs> they're all digital. And so they look fine, but they sound like this. You know, so we needed the sound of, of masses praying the Lord's Prayer. So I met Greg a week before his SoCal Harvest event where there's, you know, he fills up Angel Stadium. Yeah. And I was studying it and it was twofold. It's like, I want to meet people that live the Jesus movement and listen to the stories. And then, by the way, I need you to lead <laughs> the stadium in the Lord's Prayer. So, and we're going to bring sound engineers to record it. And that's the, the sound that you hear in the movie. Um, and then we just became great friends. Um, we just, I, I love he and Kathy. I think um, he's one of, you know, he's, I call him the last Jedi. He's one of those last guys that can put, you know, 100,000 people in a stadium. And yeah. he's one of the most authentic, wonderful, um, friends and mentors and, and, uh, and, and pastors I've ever met. And our mantra is Hollywood is important, but it's not the hope of the world. The local church is the hope of the world. So what we do is we like being an air force or sort of setting a volleyball that local churches can spike. And yeah. we like to be front end instigators, uh, uh, in theaters across America, but it really is about supporting pastors and the work of the local church. Cause that's where, that's where the change happens. And, uh, and we just want to be a cultural sort of air force. And so I, I hold pastors in great reverence and, uh, and, and love serving them. And so Greg's just one of those wonderful uh, pastors that I've had the privilege of getting to know and working on many projects with since. And, but this is the one that we've, this is the, this is the project that started our relationship and, uh, and, and it's great to finally get it to the screen. So you guys have been working on this a while and I know the, and help me with the timeline here. The pandemic shifted it, and you guys did Jesus, the Jesus Music documentary during the mm-hmm. pandemic and came back to Jesus Revolution. Is that how the timeline worked? Explain that. <laughs> yeah, so when we say we make our plans and God guides our steps, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, we, we were releasing a film called I Still Believe. It was actually the number one yeah. film in America the day it released, but that day was March 9th, 2020. So that wasn't the best day to release a film. So every all theaters were closed down five days later. Um, yeah. And uh, and we had. I talked with Jeremy. I interviewed Jeremy Camp like a couple of days before, and it was it was like <laughs> I, awesome to I see his him. excitement. And then like pandemic happened. <laughs> so on the one hand, I'm glad it got a theatrical release. We moved it back a week, and you know a million people saw it opening weekend, and and that would not have happened if uh, if we hadn't moved it back. It would have gotten sold off, you know, with with with, uh, with other films. Uh, you know, it was just it was a hard time for the whole entertainment industry but but um so i'm glad we got a theatrical release even though it was only five days yeah but yeah. uh but you know the world changed and we had uh two films in pre-production which was american underdog that andy and i uh, were directing and then jesus revolution which at the time my co-writer john gunn was directing and uh and so the plug was w- was pulled and you know for a year we couldn't uh make movies and uh, almost a year and and all that we could make was you know, we, we could work with 10 people. And so we, we said, well, we, we're not going to not make stuff. We don't handle boredom well. And so we decided to make, it's like, what can we make with just 10 people? Cause those are the rules. And uh, we said, well, let's go back to our roots with documentaries. And Josh Walsh, a uh, uh, producer worked for me, worked for us for a long time, had this idea of what if we told the story of Christian music? Cause we're all sitting around yeah. in Nashville doing nothing. Which and I can't so believe we, we was never, has never been told before. 
I mean, that, right? that well, floor, I think one that of the reasons me. is everyone is so busy. And so all of a sudden, yeah. uh, all the artists were just doing nothing, nothing. And it started with an incredibly authentic interview with Amy Grant. Yeah. And she was about to have open heart surgery. And so we, we couldn't go in the house. Uh, and so we, we butted the camera up to the glass of her window and shrouded it. So it didn't have any reflections and had a speaker and she was just on the other side. And she gave this wonderful, authentic, honest, tell all interview. And I think every other artist just followed suit. And yeah, so I've just become obsessed lately with stories that I think so many of us feel that God can't use me. So many people sit in church and feel like, well, I can't be useful because I'm not talented enough. I struggle with this or that. I've done this or that. And I love telling stories of like, God can use anybody and chooses the most unlikely tools and whatever you're, you've done that you're, that, that, that you're ashamed of can really be turned into something beautiful and, and used and you're still useful to the kingdom. And, uh, and I love those stories. And that, that, that's a huge part of Jesus revolution. It was a huge part of Jesus music is just this idea that God uses flawed and broken people um to 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 do wonderful things and and uh I, you know I count, I count myself as one of them you know yeah. and and uh and so that really leaped out with Jesus music and also uh with Jesus revolution yeah there was a line in Jesus music i think it was uh bill gaither uh that's that said something i think it was maybe to the you can help me with this maybe to the uh editor of ccm or something like that where he's mm -hmm. like if if you're looking for perfect people to put on stage like or to, yeah, to be the front actually, like that that's that's not going to happen. He uh, actually said I thought that Jerry was really Falwell. powerful. Yeah, he said it to Jerry Fall oh, yeah. cuz Jerry Fall said that I think they were doing an event um uh with him and, and he said I hear some stories about some of the artists and he's like they're probably true. We're doing the best we can but he, and then he said if you're looking for um you know a, a, you know perfect artists you you won't find them. We're 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 a flawed yeah. bunch and trying to express our you know they're trying to express their gifts and wrestle. And sometimes yeah. that is the artist's dilemma is, uh, yeah. is you can be your own, you, you can be your own worst enemy. But um, a lot of the things that make, make an artist's personality difficult also leads to beautiful expressions of uh, what do they call art? The rage of the inarticulate, you know? And so yeah. sometimes the things that are buried inside you or that you're wrestling with as a person, art becomes your outlet. And then I think that's why the Psalms are so meaningful to us, you know? And so I think when, you know, you two closes their show to the Psalm 40, that's 3000 years old. It's because this, this King David was so willing to wrestle with his own demons on the page mm -hmm. and through, through songs. And, uh, and so I think that that's a, that's an interesting, uh, interesting dichotomy with artists and, and, and and with dynamic people, you know, and so that was a huge part of the of the documentary for sure. Yeah, and I think that's absolutely true with this film as well. Uh, so let let's talk. Let's kind of talk about that. Give me the uh, maybe the synopsis, and then st let's talk about the cast. Uh, you know, Chuck Smith would have been in that category of God. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm flawed here, and and has a uh, definitely a view of the hippies that were that you know <laughs> yeah. was different than what ended up. Uh, being uh, and God used him. Uh, so, kind of talk to me about that, and then about the cast of the film, getting Kelsey Grammer to to play Chuck Smith. Yeah, well, um, you know, when I met Greg and learned that he and Kathy, as teenagers, were both saved in the Jesus movement, baptized at Pirates Cove, where it was was sort of like the epicenter of a lot of the pictures from Time Magazine, and um, and and there was this wonderful love story, and I began to understand what had happened. He he, I remember he said. When Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee met, it was like nitro meeting glycerin. Chuck Smith was this square pastor with a dying church. And on a dare, I think the whole church's attitude at the time was hippies can only come to church if they go home, rejoin society, take a bath, get a haircut. Then they can come back to church. And Chuck Smith's daughter really confronted him that he, he was judging, as was the whole church at the time. Uh, a group of people that he had never met. And he said, well, if God sends me a hippie, then fine. And, and lo and behold, she picked up hitchhiking, uh, this dynamic street preacher from uh, uh, that was involved in Haight-Ashbury and sort of what was going on there with the Jesus movement, San Francisco, Lonnie Frisbee. 
And it was like uh, nitro meeting glycerin. And for a time when they were together, um, it was unbelievable. And Chuck Smith decided to just throw his doors open to this group of people that he had a hard time understanding. He let this music group on the stage of his church, which ended up becoming Love Song, which was one of the first bands that created Christian music as it exists today. He let mm-hmm. Lonnie preach and his church just exploded. And there was this dynamic partnership between the two of them. Uh, and they each carried their, their individual flaws. And what we, there's no perfect person in the story, but, but we're telling that moment that, uh, that, that these characters were, were, were trapped, were, were swept up into this perfect moment in time. That was America's last great awakening. And so the cast was very important. And, uh, Joel Courtney was atta- uh, t- attached to the to the film. I love him. And Super Eight was his first movie, and and then I had gotten to know from the uh, the show The Chosen. I had gotten to know Jonathan mm-hmm. Rumi, and I just felt like he would be perfect. He's such a good actor and such a good guy. And then when it came to Chuck, uh, when we remounted the project, I just I just had one person on the list, which Kelsey Grammer, and I just felt like when you can do Frasier and Macbeth, that's incredible <laughs> range. And, uh, and, and he's just, he's very spiritually curious and, and he's much, he's very much a seeker. And, um, he felt like he was having a crisis of wanting to do something meaningful. And the script came in the next day and he is one of the best actors I've ever worked with. And every performance in the film I'm proud of. And Brent McCorkle that I co-directed the film really worked hard on casting. Um, and I'm very proud of the team and it's one of the most fun moments I've ever had making a movie and, and uh, but the but the but the actors are fantastic in the movie, and especially yeah. Kelsey and Jonathan together. They they are they are truly fantastic dance partners, and and both very skilled actors, and both fiercely devoted to the movie and to to why we're making it. And it was just cool to see them sort of just uh, uh, you know perform together. It was amazing. It seems to be that the last few movies that you guys have done, either the Lord is the Lord has orchestrated something pretty cool in the the Dennis Quaid's and the uh, folks like that who are either curious or are on your sets and are now more curious about their faith and and wrestling with that. Um, so I just yeah. find that interesting. Have you kept in touch with with guys like that uh, for with the with the spiritual aspect of them? Oh yeah. I I, I love building. Um, one of the things that I love most is, is seeing this bridge built between two worlds. Um, yeah. I remember, uh, taking Mel Gibson (laughs) down at Harvest SoCal and, uh, Greg interviewed him about Hacksaw Ridge. And, you know, I I sat with, with Mel as uh, during Greg's sermon, they've stayed close. And then, um, Kelsey went, uh, and, and, and she went down onto the field. Uh, uh, we were like, where's Kelsey? Wow. Uh, uh, a couple months ago and, uh, and, and brought his family and, and, um, and we all went to his new year's party and Greg went as well. And, and, and Kathy and, and, uh, I just love this. There's just such a gap between Christianity and Hollywood. And it's fun to, to build bridges within that gap. And, and Dennis yeah. Quaid as well. I remember him, um, calling me just before, um, imagine released and we had these deep long spiritual conversations a lot a, a lot of them either have a, a faith background like dennis who's from texas or right. um or they're just spiritually hungry and curious um i was reading that matthew perry book uh, that just came out and one of the things he said which yeah. is interesting is is that I, he said i'm convinced being rich and being famous is not the answer and you have to no one who isn't famous will ever understand that and there's this interesting thing with people in the industry, even the people that are at the pinnacle of their craft, so many of us feel that if I could just, if I could just get famous, if I could just get rich, if I was just more beautiful, whatever, I would be happy. And most of America, you know, most of us live and die under that pursuit and that lie. There's a few people that have gotten on the other side of that and realized, man, this isn't the answer. And so it's an, it's a uniquely, um, it's a unique group of people, wonderful people, incredibly talented people, but there's a unique misery sometimes, uh, to, to movie stars because they've gotten everything that we would all think would make you happy and they're not happy. And so it's fun to, mm-hmm. to just build a bridge back between, um, 
uh, you know, Christianity and, and Hollywood. And I don't know what happened or when it happened, but we abandoned the playing field at some point in time. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I've found that, that, uh, we just need to re-engage, uh, yeah. uh, that, that sort of mountain. And, uh, and I do yeah. think it's possible. So it's fun. It's fun. So yeah, the relationships continue and it's just great to work with really talented people. Um, but it's also great to, to build a little bridge as well. Yeah. Good point. All right. So tell me about the test. Uh, you guys have tested this movie a lot uh, with the audiences. A uh, good buddy of mine, Jason Noble, uh, is is on our team. And he's he's going out and Jason's doing a, a lot of the the, the, the screenings uh, for the film. Uh, and and you guys have had some incredible stories come from these screenings, right? I know there's one down in. Uh, yeah. Tell me the one down in Sherwood, uh, yeah, yeah, where the, cool. you guys had to like roll the screen up and folks we've got baptized. Screened, we've screened the film. Um, a lot and uh i think it's important with this film because this film's really a tool um for christians everywhere it's a film that multiple generations love watching together because you have this young romance with these teenagers with greg and kathy this square pastor and chuck smith this dynamic uh, street preacher with lonnie frisbee and all caught in a moment so it's one of those films that you can watch with multiple generations and all enjoy because everyone sees themselves in the movie the film tested higher than any film we've ever made, including I can only imagine. And so it was important to get the film out and show it to, to faith leaders and community leaders. And and we've been doing that a lot. Uh, the one that was most special to me is I went down to Sherwood uh, Baptist where that is where my career in faith film really started. I was a music video director, uh, short film director and commercial director at the time, mainly music videos. I love to blow things up and, you know, and, uh, and, and, sort of just, that was a fun medium. Uh, I went down to Sherwood to work on a movie courageous to do their action sequences because they were doing action sequences involving cars and you never want to mm-hmm. combine that with church volunteers. And I remember, um, <laughs> you know, you want professionals to do that part. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, I went down there to do that for them. And Alex asked me the question of uh, that is a profound question that everyone should ask themselves of what's your purpose and the purpose of your work. And, not only could I not answer the question, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And that really led to us taking the leap of making faith-based films. And, uh, and so I love that church and I love them. And, and, uh, and so they had a Christian worldview film festival. And so I wanted to take it down there and an early cut and just see how it played and uh, see how that, you know, it was, it was crazy time, you know, in, in the, in the seventies to so see sort of how the material played for that audience. And um and when they finished the movie in a big center screen there at Sherwood, uh, they had to sort of take the screen, rip the screen down because I think it was like 16 kids wanted to spontaneously be baptized after they had seen the movie. And uh, and boy, would that not be cool. And there's this scene in the movie where, where, um, where Lonnie baptizes Greg. And I've never felt such a spiritual um, moment on a day. We've had a lot of miracles filming these movies, but never anything even close to to that feeling and there was like a, a dozen of the extras i remember jonathan coming up out of the water and saying i'm doing this just like greg lori taught me but this is not acting like these are real decisions for these people i'm just making sure i'm doing it just right you know and while we were filming that Gre- the real greg lori was actually none of us even knew it baptizing a cast member and uh and it was, it was really special i think somehow that that translates through even when i watch the film I'm like, I need some of this. Let somebody baptize me, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so I think, I think that that would be a really cool outcome of, of people yeah. watching the film mm-hmm. is, is people just saying, I, I want to be baptized. I, I want this same feeling. I want this same moment in my life. And what a cool metaphor baptism is the idea of everything that, that you carry and feel ashamed of um, being washed away and, and, and being made new. That, that, that's cool. And so, you know, one of the things about the Jesus movement is historically, it was the highest baptisms ever recorded in a single year in American history, um, 1972. And so it would be so cool to, to see that um, happen again. And uh, yeah. I just think that we're in a very, very similar moment in American history. Uh, a lot of things feel the same, uh, a lot of same fears. I remember talking to a lot of people that lived the Jesus movement. And they said, man, it was just a desperate time. It was Vietnam and it was assassinations of leaders and, and it was just a desperate moment. And LSD and, you know, sort of the 
the free love drugs rock and roll uh, especially lsd is this quest for god didn't work it left us hopeless and uh and then the jesus movement was born and i think we're at a similar moment of like man where do we go from here uh what are the answers to all this stuff and so the film feels very very modern and current mm -hmm. uh in the, yeah. that in that context and i just hope that i hope it happens again so last couple questions for you uh you, you mentioned that uh, and the hippies of the day who are the who are the hippies of today who who is who are the hippies right now that's a great question i've thought a lot about this who are the hippies of today uh all I can tell you is my daughter's 14, just turned 14. Got Did you just call your daughter uh, a hippie? Uh, no, no, but, but I, <laughs> but I'll tell you this, she's obsessed with this sort of influencer, um, currency and, 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 and whole new wave. And so we go to, for fun, we go to the every con together. We've been to VidCon, TwitchCon, ComicCon, and yeah. It was funny walking through the halls of these and you know, everybody's dressed up, you know, like whatever. Yeah. And just yeah. seeing how this new generation is talking to each other and seeing, um, you know, you could put you could put Tom Cruise right here and Tommy in it or Mr. Beast over here, you know, and there's no question. Yeah, there's no yeah. question where my daughter's going. And so I right. think there is a new generation emerging um with a very powerful voice and and uh and i would say that they're they're incredibly spiritually aware i would say that one of the things as i studied the jesus movement is i didn't realize the difference between spiritual awakening and revival revival happens inside the church but if you pray for spiritual awakening watch out you're paying you're praying for cultural chaos at least for a moment because in the 60s there was suddenly spiritual awakening there was a generation that was aware of their own need for something more than what they considered to be the shallow and hollow and plastic dreams of their parents and this sort of materialism by a house you know that generation coming out of world war ii and there was something to them saying there has to be more than this. And that led them to this countercultural revolt and sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And LSD is this quest for God. And, and there was chaos to it, but spiritual awakening is what was driving that. And that's where the Jesus movement then came out of. So I think if you pray for spiritual awakening, be careful because that can lead to a generation just all of a sudden being aware of their own problems. And sometimes they go to the wrong place to solve those problems. So I think that there's a generation that's suddenly becoming aware that like social media isn't doing it. It's not, you know, it's not what we hoped it would be. It's not connecting us like we thought it would. What's, right. what's, you know, where do we go from here? And, and, uh, I do sense a lot of the Why am I still lonely? Why am I still not happy? Why am I still lonely? Why am I still anxious? Yeah. Why do I feel like I'm not enough? Uh, and, and there's a generation that's very young and very aware of these things. And so, as I would say, even though there's church decline in America, I feel that there's an increase in spirituality and, and in a hunger. And, yeah. uh, and that's what happened curiosity. here and it happened, you know, and curiosity. So I see a lot of the same similarities as I, as I, as I research this story. And then as I'm walking through TwitchCon <laughs> or, or, yeah. or Comic-Con most recently or, or VidCon and I, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm the square. I'm the one walking around saying, what is, this is the weirdest thing. But when you really dig, you understand that these, these, these kids have a voice and this is a yearning to connect. Um, even if it's 20 people wearing the same costume, you know? And so I think that, uh, I think we're right back where we are. And look, if you study American history, there's been a revival in America that's like every 50 years, all the way back to the great awakening that preceded the American revolution. And it's a, it's an integral part of our history. And it's an integral part of us finding the essence of, of who we are as Christians and even as Americans. And, and, uh, and I think that, um, that it's, we are, we are overdue and, uh, and I think that God can do it again. And, and I think we're in the same moment of the key has, is always every time desperation when we're, when we're willing to say, what is the answer, you know, and we need help. Um, that's when these things typically happen. So my prayer is that my job is I'm not, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a speaker. I'm a storyteller. So I think my role, we all have gifts and we all have our role. The best I can do is to is to is to tell the story of the last one.
in hopes that yeah. it can happen again. But I think it's a film that yeah. that anybody who who uh, who walks in, I think, will enjoy it, will laugh and cry. But hopefully, it'll make them think, "Man, maybe this can happen in my life and in my time." Good. Quick story for you. I'll let you go. So you mentioned the all the cons. Uh, and, uh, you, and you might've been here with me. So NRB will do their convention at, in Anaheim, California. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like maybe every four or five years that we're, that we're in Anaheim and it overlaps with comic con. Uh, and so that's right. Yeah. yeah. So we come in and then comic con comes in. And so there's like a, two days of overlap. So to, to watch, you know, big name pastors and all these Christians, you know, in the restroom with Klingons and walking down the That's hall. So with, funny. It's awesome. Uh, but it's a reminder of of us engaging culture. You know, it's a very visual mm-hmm. uh, of of how we should, you know, be in the culture, not of it. Um, well, I, I you know, it's interesting. I just took my daughter to Comic Con L.A. And the thing that angered me the most um was not anything I saw inside the convention. Although I saw some weird stuff inside the convention. Um, not normal for a uh, you know, 40 year old men dressed as Batman to all gather. And then you're also, you're looking at like 20 <laughs> Batmans that all live with their mothers. Anyway, it's, it's a, uh, but, but there was a, there was a, there was a fringe Christian group outside with a megaphone sort of condemning the whole thing and saying, you know, Jesus wouldn't be in there and how dare you, People. And I, I actually think Jesus would be in there, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and I think that that uh, that that everything I saw inside there w- was people wanting to connect and wanting to find meaning beyond themselves, and that's one of the reasons why you go to comic books and to things like Star Wars and comparative mythology is what drives those, and it's really a quest for meaning and for a savior, and uh, and so I think that we're supposed to go. You know, defense was never. Yeah our playbook. I, I love it when, when, you know, Jesus says to Peter on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. No one's going to throw a gate at you. A gate is not a weapon. Gates are meant to be stormed. And I think we've forgotten that we're supposed to take hope to places that it doesn't exist yet. And uh, I yeah. think we've lost that a bit. And so I do think that, uh, that, that it's a good visual, a mega pastor yeah. beside, beside someone that's dressed as, you know, as, as Superman, that's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and I hope that that stuff happens more. Yeah. Well, man, uh, uh be- best of success on the movie. I hope it's, uh, excellent. Uh, the it opens nationwide February 24th. Tell us the website. If I'm a pastor, how do I get resources? How do I l- inform my church? Where do I go? It's super easy. It's just Jesus revolution dot movie. And, uh, and we're actually doing a, it's already selling out, uh, across the nation, which is great, but, um, a on the 22nd, which is Wednesday, we're doing a special event with 15 minutes of bonus content, a special message from Greg Laurie. It's never happened in a studio film to have a pastor share the gospel after a movie, but it's an opening night uh, uh, sort of premiere access event. And uh, and what I want to challenge people is find someone to take to that night that doesn't uh, that doesn't know Christ or or you know is on their own spiritual journey. Uh, because of the bonus content and then it la- launches nationwide on February 24th. And, you know, we make, uh, we've learned it with, I can only imagine why is it important? The theatrical is uh, this thing called FOMO fear of missing out. When we unify our voice, you know, as the last step before the walls <laughs> fell down at Jericho was a completely unified voice. When we unify our voice together as a community, we make so much noise that it triggers curiosity. And so with, I can only imagine the first 2 million tickets were, on the opening weekend, we're mostly our, our, our audience, but the, the 8 million tickets that followed, um, you know, were every weekend more and more of the people that we want to reach because they were just like, what is this movie? Why is this movie? They were frequent moviegoers. And, uh, and so amazing things happen when we unify our voice, uh, on an opening weekend. And so special access is, is two days before on Wednesday, and then it opens nationwide, uh, on the 24th. Good. Well, hopefully another pandemic won't happen five days into this one. So. Oh gosh! But my last two movies, I still believe, uh, was uh, was was the pandemic, and then uh, American Underdog, which came out Christmas Day, day three of the release, was the highest recorded cases because of Omicron. So yes, please God, no more <laughs> yeah, yeah, pandemics. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, John, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate your time. All right, man. God bless you. Thanks so much.
Hey guys, hanging out with Angie Lomas. She is our lead designer on the 1230 team. Angie, so talk to me about creating custom graphic designs for churches and ministries. I want people to get a sense of what kinds of projects we get to do at 1230. Well, of course we get to do the the sermon series. I love getting to tackle lots of different sermon series for different kinds of churches. Uh, ministries, uh, but we also do, you know, social graphics. We do social graphics for kids, for students, for just the adult church at large. Um, but some of the other cool things that we get to do are partner with conferences. I'm working on a men's conference, a marriage conference, and sometimes it's not even building out, you know, the main graphic. Maybe a, a church comes with the main graphic and then we build all the collateral out, kind of come alongside a creative team to do that. So basically, if you can dream it, we could probably find a way to work it in and, and get it done for you. Yeah, well, I love what you do uh, for our team and for the church at large. So thank you for everything that you're doing. I love it. Thanks. The show notes for this episode are available now at makingsundayhappen.com. Hey guys, be sure to check out this movie, Jesus Revolution. It is fantastic, great quality, a great movie to take a church group to or buy out a theater. Again, February 24th is opening day, but don't let opening day uh, be the only time you use this movie. Uh, You can use it in the, the weeks after that by buying out a theater or as it comes out on home release, feel free to use it in your church with licensing and that sort of thing. So Jesus Revolution is the movie. Be sure to check it out. All right, next week on the show, I welcome my friend Mac Lake. Mac is an author and leadership coach. Uh, His work has been very influential in the world of church planting and church multiplication. He's the author of The Multiplication Effect, Building a Leadership Pipeline that Solves Your Leadership Shortage. We're going to be talking about how to lead others, how to lead leaders, and how to lead a department, the differences between the three of those. Also, how to structure your team, how to onboard new leaders into your organization, and more. That's next week with Matt. We'll go out there and create some incredible worship experiences this weekend. I'll catch you next week. Making Sunday Happen is a production of the Ministry of 1230 Media. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your church, visit makingsundayhappen.com. Yeah.